Hello dear students, let's see a recursive function to convert a decimal number to hexadecimal number. Now as you see in the previous video, we saw how to convert a decimal number to binary number. So what is the procedure of converting decimal to hex? I have already written a function here as you see, a recursive function which is named as dec to hex, decimal to hexadecimal and n is the number that we want to convert from decimal to hex. The function is again void just as in the previous video. So this function won't have a return statement, obviously. And this is clearly a recursive function because dec to hex calls dec to hex again. Now the explanation would be done here by your teacher to how to convert a decimal number to hex although it is expected that you know this decimal to hex. Now hexadecimal number system has 16 digits. Decimal number system has 10 digits 0 to 9. Hexadecimal has 16 digits which are 0 to 9 as usual 10 digits. Then we have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 6 more digits, but 10 is labeled as A, okay, or is shown as A, then 11 is shown as B, and so on. So you can see these are, these are the 16 digits, and you can form a number using any of these 16 digits, but in decimal, you can form a number using only 10 digits that is 0 to 9. Let's take an example that we have a number 160 which is a decimal number. So base 10 and we want to convert this number into base 16 hexadecimal. Then the procedure is this 160 the number given is divided with 16. Now why we are dividing the number with 16 and not with 2 or 3 or any other number is because we want to convert our number from decimal that is base 10 to base 16 just try to understand. Now going with our program again this 160 is the n the value that we want to convert into hex. So in our discussion the n, the parameter shown in the function is the number. Let's say this n is 160. Now what is done is this number 160 is divided by 16. So we will get a quotient saying that 16 into 10 is 160 and the remainder obtained will be 0. Let us call this remainder as r. So you can see in our, in our function that this statement records the remainder. Remainder is obtained by dividing n with 16 and obtaining the remainder using percent operator. Now the 10, the quotient that we have got, we are going to call this as n again. So we say the number given was 160 but now it has changed to 10. And this new quotient that is the new value of n is again divided by 16. But now you see that division is not possible. Of course it is possible but by putting a fraction point. But we are talking about integer arithmetic. So division of 16 with 10 is not possible. Only thing we can do is we can say 16 into 0 is 0 and remainder is 10. Of course whatever is the number is the remainder because 16 multiplied by 0 is 0 and what remains is 10 as the remainder. This is the new remainder that we have got. And now you watch the new quotient that we have can be called as n again. Now you all will agree there is no sense in dividing this quotient that is n with 0 with 16 anymore because anyway we are going to get 0 as the answer always. In fact, the number has diminished to 0, you watch. It was 160, then the number became 10, now number is 0, so it's time to stop. And whatever remainders we have obtained are printed from bottom to top. 
So we have obtained two remainders. Remainder is 10 and remainder is 0. Now when this remainder 10 is printed, it's not printed as 10 on the screen. But this will be printed as A because 10 that is digit 10 I am saying in hexadecimal. Yes, yes, the digit 10. We have 0 to 9 digits. Then we have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. This 10 is labeled as A. Further when we go up, the next remainder is 0. Now come on, 0 will be printed as 0. So we say 160, 160 in decimal is equivalent to A0 in hexadecimal. So that's the procedure. You can put this procedure in your own words, like given a value n, which is decimal number, divide this number with 16, obtain some remainder, keep it aside, keep that remainder, don't print it immediately, and you will get some quotient. Again, divide that quotient with 16, obtain some remainder, keep that remainder recorded, don't print it. Do this till the number converges to 0. When you have number as 0, then you start printing the remainders from last to first. And if the remainder, if the remainder is greater than 9, just check here the remainder was 10. If it is greater than 9, then instead of printing that remainder itself, print the equivalent code for it, like 10 is A, 11 is B and so on. So having said that, Let's go to the body of this recursive function and you will see that in this recursive function if n is 160 as in our example then we have declared variable r which will record the remainder and this is the recursive call with n by 16. But then we have written a switch statement to check is the remainder 10 if it is 10, print A. If it is 11, print B and so on. And if it is 15, print F. And if it is neither of 10 to 15, then go to default. Then go to default and print the remainder as it is. And this is the end of switch here. This is the end of if. And this is the end of function. Just as I said in the previous video, the best way to learn recursion when you are new to it, is to literally write the recursive functions and run them on paper. Now imagine deck to hex, I have written in short here, deck to hex has been called with a value 160. Now when you run this code, there is a local variable r declared, correct? And then the function is going to check if 160 is greater than 0, which is true. So this entire if, this entire if will run, this if is ranging from the line which I have marked, the line which I have marked up to this point, isn't it? So all these lines have to run because if is true. Now R recorded over here is 160% 16. Just check this line. 160% 16, so R recorded will be obviously 0. Correct? 16 tens are 160, remainder is 0. And now we call the deck to hex function recursively with the value n by 16, which is 160 upon 16, which is 10. So please try to understand that the same function deck to hex is getting called from this line. So here is the new occurrence of the function. Deck to hex has been called again with the parameter n as 10. Look how important our explanation of converting deck to hex on paper can be now understood. We had the parameter n as 160, but now we have parameter n as 10. That's the point where we are exactly placed n is 10. Again, local variable r comes into picture. Local variable r is declared. And now the function checks is the current value of n, which is 10. Is it greater than 0? Which is true. So R evaluated will be 10% 16. Just observe 10% 16 is 10. So R is 10. I hope by now you know how percent operator works. So I am not explaining this. And after that, 
tech to hex is called recursively with the value 10 by 16 just check n is 10 now so 10 by 16 and 10 by 16 is 0 okay so here we go the function starts all over again with the parameter n as 0 i hope you are understanding the parameter n now has a value 0 but when this function starts you know r is declared as local variable but this if is false the condition is false the current value of n is 0 0 greater than 0 is false so the entire if portion will be skipped it won't be executed and you watch that the control will come out of if without executing anything and the function will end because you must have seen that after the if this is the end of if this entire if will not run and the function ends so what you have to understand is when deck to hex gets called with the parameter n the function simply terminates without performing any work because if statement itself is false so i am striking out this function this function ends agreed and you know whenever a function ends calling function resumes isn't it but from where will the calling function resume obviously now you know that calling function will resume from the switch statement hello because this function last time had made this call so when the function resumes it says hello i have finished with this line so i'll resume from the next line so it's only a matter of running a switch statement just check we have written switch r that means we are checking what is the value of r and observe that r is 10 now if r is greater than 9 then we should not print it as it is like 10 or 11 if 10 we should print a if 11 we should print b so the switch r over here makes this case true indeed r is 10 isn't it indeed it is 10 so as r is 10 it goes into this case and it prints oh i am so sorry i made a mistake here i am so sorry people might be observing throughout the video i will print a literally i will print a in this printf and what if it was case 11 it is not so in this example r is 10 but what if it was 11 then i will literally put printf b in a sense i am fooling i am not printing actual r but instead of 10 i am going to print a instead of 11 i am going to print b and so on so by the way you know that in this example case 10 was true so it has printed a so the first remainder printed is a i hope you understood and then of course you know that switch ends if ends and the function ends so this deck to hex also has finished but that will make the calling function resume and calling function will resume from the switch statement as i am marking here it will resume with the switch statement isn't it and what it checks is what is r now you watch r is 0 then r isn't 10 isn't 11 correct it is not 12 13 14 15 so all the cases from 10 to 15 will be false so ultimately you know if all the cases are false default runs and here we are going to put literally printing of the remainder in percent %d format because we want 0 to be printed as 0. So the first output was a printed by this function and this function finished resuming the previous function printing 0. And when this function also finishes main resumes. So that's it. That's the way how this function runs. Obviously main declares a number ask the user to input a number say 160 is the number and then we make deck to hex call which will print a0 as we saw on the screen so this is how you convert decimal to hex and write a recursive function thank you very much